Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you the Books of Wonder version of the Marvelous Land of Oz. Uh, like the centenary edition of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, this is a sort of facsimile of the original first edition. Not quite exactly the same, but very close. Um, the original one did not come with a dust cover, like this one does. But anyway, this was bought new on Amazon and it arrived by this. So. Again, this is one of the reasons why I will no longer buy my books from Amazon. Underneath here, underneath the dust jacket, we have a facsimile of the first edition cover. It's slightly different, very, very, very slightly. It's just the way the title is laid out um, on the original book. You've got the the in small print at the top and Marvelous Land of Oz underneath, but it is very, very close to the original. Um, yeah. Those who haven't read The Marvelous Land of Oz, there might be a couple of spoilers as I describe the book, so just a warning. So this is the first Oz book that was uh, illustrated by John R. Neal and not W. W. Denslow, um, as L. Frank Baum had a falling out with Denslow, um, something over the, the play musical extravaganza version of Wizard of Oz. Um, however, both of them retained rights to the characters, and Denslow went on to publish uh, newspaper comic strips about the Scarecrow and the Tin Man, and uh, Baum went and did his own um, newspaper comic strips, known as um, Queer Visitors from the Land of Oz. Um, but he also released a second book. Um, Wizard of Oz had gone on to be very popular and Particularly, uh, it had been uh, recreated as a as a stage musical extravaganza, and you can see in here there is a dedication to the actors who played the Scarecrow and the Tin Man in the stage version of The Wizard of Oz. And Al Frank Baum wrote this one with the intention of this also becoming uh, a stage production, and it does show in the storyline how he, he creates an army of women which are very obviously meant to be a chorus on stage, things like that, other th things in the story which you can be done with stage tricks. He tell you that he wanted this to be a stage production as well, which it did become, but uh, was not successful. So this, the inside is, is a very, very good facsimile of the original edition. Most of the illustrations are in black, are black and white illustrations with some color plates, very nice color plates. Now, this might be controversial, but I actually prefer John R. Neal's illustrations to uh, W.W. Denslow. I always found Denslow's illustrations to be just a little bit too cartoony. Um, whereas if you look at the picture of Tip here, he looks more human than <laughs> Denslow's version of Dorothy uh, does. Just a little bit more realistic. So The Marvelous Land of Oz is the second book of Oz and is also the only book of Oz not to feature Dorothy at all. Um, so instead we are introduced to a new character called Tip, who is a young boy who lives in the north of Oz in the land of the Gillikins. And we'd not been to the land of the Gillikins before. In The, in the Wonderful Wizard of Oz we'd been to uh, Munchkin Land, uh, we've been to uh, Winky Country, and we've been to Quadlink Country, but uh, we've not seen Gillikins. But this book starts in the land of the Gillikins, where there's a young boy named T Tip Terius, or Tip for short, and he's been raised by this wicked old woman, um, who we're told is not a witch, but is an aspiring witch. She's trying to become a witch. Um, and that's her, there's Mombi. Um, and then one day he decides to uh, play a trick on Mombi by building a man out of uh, sticks and a pumpkin. And he creates uh, Jack Pumpkinhead uh, there to scare Mombi. Mombi comes home, sees that Tip has tried to scare her, and decides that she's had enough of Tip and that she's going to cast a spell on him uh, as soon as she can, but, uh, which prompts Tip to want to run away. 
uh, before she can do that. Before she does that, she uses what she's just bought uh, something called the powder of life, which brings inanimate objects to life. She uses it on Jack and brings Jack Pumpkinhead to life. Now, if Jack Pumpkinhead seems familiar to people who have not read the book, that is because he's one of the characters featured in the Disney film, The Return to Oz, of which this book and the next book, Ozma of Oz, are the basis for. So a lot of characters from that movie are introduced in this book, one of which is Jack Pumpkinhead, another of which is the Gump, which is the sort of flying couch thing with the animal head but there are lots of other new characters from Oz which become staples of the series which are introduced in here and of course some old favorites like the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. Um, New characters include the Wooden Sawhorse which is another inanimate object brought to life with the powder of life Uh, and the Wogglebug Mr. H.M. Wogglebug T.E. which stands for Highly magnified Woggle Wogglebug, thoroughly educated, which is uh, definitely one of the more pompous characters you'll ever meet in Oz or anywhere else. Definitely an Oz favorite. And then, of course, by the end, you are introduced to Princess Ozma, the true ruler of Oz. Um, so those who have read the book know the secret of where Ozma is throughout this book. Uh, Those who have not read it, um, I think I'll save that one rather than spoil it. (laughs) This is actually one of my favorite uh, Oz books. It might be a bit of a hot take, but I actually really like the fact that it doesn't have Dorothy in it. It makes Oz seem like more of a real place to me, that adventures and things can continue there without the little girl from Canvas, ex- Canvas? Kansas, <laughs> um, experiencing that, that that they can have their own adventures and stuff in Oz, uh, whether Dorothy is there or not. It, Oz is not her creation. It's not her dream. It is a real country and place in the books. And so an adventure with a new main character uh, meeting some old favorites happening in Oz just makes the land just seem that little bit more um, real as a real place. Obviously, it's still a fairy story with magic and strange creatures and talking tin men and scarecrows and pumpkin heads um, and things like that. So it's obviously not a real place, but it just feels like that's that's where where's the Judy Garland movie made? Well, it was all a dream, and that's why everything is so weird. No, this is a real fairy country that you can get to, um, and things happen there when Dorothy isn't there. Uh, that being said, I might be in the minority, or at least I was in 1904 when this was written, because Baum received a lot of letters from the kids who read this book, all requesting that, or- that Dorothy uh, return to Oz. So in the next book, Ozma of Oz, that's exactly what he does. Uh, Dorothy goes on another adventure and comes back to Oz, and there has not been an Oz book without Dorothy since. And then, of course, um, there's Glinda. The Books of Wonder books... uh, these are the very nice facsimile versions, and they're so difficult to get hold of here in England, which really, really annoys me. I always have to go searching the internet to try and find them, and I don't always get the right versions which match. Um, this one, uh, which co- which this discover, this dust cover, the spine matches the centenary version of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and most of the ones I have have the same. But at least one of mine must have been an older version or something. And doesn't quite match, and I'm. It's just so difficult to get hold of the matching ones. I would like a complete set uh, that properly match, but it doesn't seem to be possible because um, they are so lovely. These books, and I love the illustrations, including the full color plates um, by by John R. Neal. That. Um, so soon, I'll uh, I'll come back and talk about Ozma of Oz, and I'll go through the other Oz books which I have as well. If you are interested, okay, All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, If you like this, then please uh, click like and subscribe.